Second time talking about the change to armor, the upcoming change. I've watched Gamble's video and holy crap. <laughs> is he right about so much stuff? Uh, it is just, there is so much to think and to talk about. This is probably going to take a while. I want to talk about some of my concerns, some of the things that I'm already thinking are going to be a problem. Uh, what I think they're actually going to do. And where the game is kind of going to. And some about the frames. So if you're looking for something specific, make sure to check the timestamps. First, uh, at the beginning I was seeing this as something completely positive. But this is actually a big nerf to our traditional methods. If they're going to increase the health of the enemies, that means your viral slash or your armor strip slash is going to take more to kill the enemy. Pablo said they would not scale like one to one because if not, then the, the health would be like too much. But the time to kill would kind of remain the same. But still, with that amount of decreasing in, in enemy armor, you just think like, holy crap, how are they going to make it kind of even? That health needs to scale like a lot. And I mean, just how much more health our enemy is going to have? Right now, to kill a level cap demolisher, it usually takes around 8 million damage. Around that. Just how much more health are these things going to have, you know? Yeah, and not only that, but the rest of the enemies, you know, it's kind of complicated. Then, kind of like, to where is the game heading to at first i'm like where could we be heading to Or is this like a change to to make it more accessible to players but which players exactly uh, if they th these kinds of changes should have been made maybe over six years ago before they even took out self damage from the game Self-damage is something that uh, if they haven't hadn't taken self-damage out of the game, we wouldn't have probably never had the uh, how was it even called the blast, not blast and run, but the meta of explosive weapons, where right? we just like rush and kill everything with explosive weapons, just and just keep moving. If they had done that way before and kept it self-damage, maybe we wouldn't have uh, this whole situation that we have today and another thing is that this change is a big buff to corrosive but for the rest is other than slash and armor strip viral this is pretty much a buff for the rest but still we're getting a lot probably a lot more health so I'm not sure up until what point it is a nerf, you know. The... Who are they making the game for? Or, you know, as I said, uh, are they really want to make this easy for the players now? Or could this be because of mobile? If they're trying to get the mobile audience, that could be a huge... Uh, revenue increase for the game. R mobile is, I think it's much more prone to spend money on stuff. You know, those little microtransactions to make something faster or easy or immediate because it's not only, it's a mentality that's been, it just turned out to be the way it is now. Everything is fast, everything is instant you don't have to put as much effort than you need in the old days. 
you don't have any more games with quests and stuff that take months to complete. You know, everything is instant, it's fast, you can do it on the same day. And so... You gotta keep that dopamine rush on the, the players and stuff, and... Maybe if you have a, a player just reaching one of those walls, all of a sudden, you know, there is that crash. And that might be the time when that a player just quits, you know. Who the F knows? Theories, right? Theories. But it's still a, I think it's still something to, that gets me kind of worried, you know. That it could just try and be trying to make the game as much as accessible as possible for mobile, and then they start salvaging the game pretty much. Uh, yeah, that is a concern. What I think it's better now to talk about the the frames. I want to talk a bit about what I think. Or how I think it will affect kind of each Warframe. I'm not going to go too in-depth about each one. But at least something to say. Ash, pretty much unchanged. Uh, probably a nerf. Nova is a buff. Because Molecular Prime deals crap tons of damage. Uh, the second ability, which I never antimatter drop. Is that it? Yep. Also a buff against armored enemies. Oberon is a buff. Mainly radiation damage. Which... Armored enemies are usually weak to you. Mag, it's a buff, more damage. Mesa, huge buff. Revenant, huge buff to his Dance Macabre. Volt, big buff to uh, Discharge. Wukong, might be the comeback of the clone, dealing lots of damage and cleaning entire rooms. Loki, nothing. Harrow, can't imagine. You know, these are indirect buffs because they... In a way or another, they are going to be dealing more damage, supposedly. Mirage, it's a big buff for Prism and probably for Explosive Ledger Domain. Big buff for Saren. Banshee, yes and no, indirect, because Exposed uh, with Sonar are going to take crap tons of damage now if they're not arm armor stripped. Buff for Amber, buff for Atlas. Baruch also with his de Desert Wind. Caliban, not as much. He's sentenced to deal damage, still need either a big buff or armor strip to deal damage, so it probably won't change too much. Chroma, it's a buff. Citrine, a big buff. The Gaff already deals true damage and his fort ability. If you cast on enemies that are affected by Doom, they're already going to be armor tripped, so... Not that big of a dis difference. Dante, it's going to be a buff for tragedy against uh, armored targets. Equinox can be a big buff depending on how much slash you can accumulate on her Manda Maim. You can just, you might be able to detonate it now and kill armored enemies. Scalibur, indirect buff. Frost is getting a, a big buff because of the uh, changes to status, especially cold. Gara, as a slash stat stick, it's gonna be a nerf. As for the nuking with her fort ability, mm, probably a buff, I think. Garuda, unless it's the first ability against an armored enemies, it is untouched. Gauss is, I'm gonna call a slight buff to his fort ability. Uh, the projectiles that the ability sends out. Grendel or the armor stripped and is just good. Gyre, huge buff. Hildrin, huge buff. Hydroid probably will have to use more viral because he can already armor stripped fairly well, but his abilities are gonna, gonna be dealing just straight more damage. In Arrows, I can't even think about it, but probably a slight buff. Ivara indirect buff. Korra. If you're if you were not using slash already, it's gonna be a buff. 
A Clerval, probably it's indirect buff. Lavos indirect buff, or kind of because status his abilities deal status damage and stuff. Uh, Limbo, indirect buff. Loki already talked about. Maze I talked about. Necros might be a huge buff to his shadows from his fort ability. Neja's a buff. Nidus probably a buff. Nyx. Mm. Okay. Actually, Nyx. This is one of the things I'm going to talk a bit later, but Nyx is probably going to be a huge buff not only to her mind control, but also to Chaos, because enemies are going to have less health. So, at some point, Radiation, Viral, or even, you know, Chaos, Viral might be a a huge way of crowd controlling and make so enemies kill themselves. Octavia, huge buff. Protea, huge buff. Corvex is actually going to be a pretty decent buff because deals radiation damage. Radiation works well against armor. Less armor, more damage. Might just make him more interesting. Maybe only a uh, Tau Forge Emerald Shard for corrosive stacks might put him uh, up a few ranks. Who knows? Rhino, indirect buff, Savagoth is already pretty strong as damage goes, Tyanax, same stuff, Titania will be dealing more damage, Trinity, pretty much unchanged, Valkyr, Valkyr can be crazy, depending on the build that you have on her talents, buff for Vauban on his grenades, Varuna, yeah, okay, indirect buff, Wisp, Still a buff. Zaku, probably huge buff because of his second ability. But even then, you probably just use Gaze and then second ability and stay around it to kill enemies faster. Your rally, I can't even think about. And Zephyr is going to be a buff against armored targets. I think that's pretty much how it goes for the majority of the frames. But. Yeah, there uh, we still have to see how it's going to be on practice, really, uh, working in the game. What do I think they are doing and they are going to do? The thing is, once they make this change, they can only go forward. It's going to be a point of no, not going back. What I mean with that, or n not stopping or not going back. If you just make that change and you don't do anything else, the game will become boring. So they have to do stuff, add a new, some new axiomas that increase enemy armor or random effects on missions or priority targets for us to kill. They are going to have to do something. Or the scale is just going to be... The scaling is just going to be... Uh, really good. And nothing is going to change too much. But I think it's going to. It's going to change pretty drastically. Why would the game be boring? Because... Remember when I said in the other video. That a lot of the stuff that wasn't dealing any damage. Will now deal damage. That is going to make a lot of the more passive farms available again. And more viable again. And even some that were not. They're just going to be viable. This is probably... If untouched, if these farms are viable again. People are going to get very excited. A lot of builds will rise up pretty fast within the first month people will find out crazy ways to play as a afk as possible and then the game will become boring because the meta is gonna be to play semi afk you know and maybe if that's giving them enough profit they won't really care as much because so far they've been just getting rid of every 
single passive farm they could probably get rid of. But that is just a, a shot in the foot. Because you're, you're nerfing enemies a lot. As it seems. So, if that nerf is just... It's, it's a hard nerf. People are gonna go AFK because... Who wouldn't do the least amount of effort to get the most amount of rewards? It's just the simple logic. That's what I think. If they don't do anything, game will be boring. But AFK and semi-AFK farms might just be what uh, might be the most viable thing for mobile players. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, that's kind of the way uh, I think it's gonna go. But I'm actually still pretty anxious to see what, what it's really gonna be. What are we getting? How things are gonna turn out to be? How much more health our enemy is gonna have? How easy is it gonna be to kill them? That's all those things I'm, I can't wait to see. We still have like two weeks to go, but yep. Let's hope for the best and let me know what you think in the comments below. Leave a like, subscribe, and peace.